Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to be talking with Robert Kennedy in the afterlife. Now, Bobby Kennedy is someone that I have known as far as history goes, and I have been drawn to the Kennedy family as I've shared in previous videos where I've channeled Jack Kennedy, former president of the United States, his first wife, Jacqueline Onassis Kennedy, and also their son, John Kennedy Jr. So I have done some other channeling with those folks. If you want to check that out, go ahead and check out the playlist for the Kennedys. So Robert Kennedy, now I have, I know a little bit about him because I know he served as the attorney general underneath his brother, the president back in the 60s. I know he was an advocate for civil rights. He was also, um, unfortunately, he his life was caught, uh, cut short through assassination, much like his brother and while he was running for president. And I know he, he died in San Francisco in a hotel in 2000 or in um, June of the year that he was running for president. So I remember that, like I know that. And a long time ago, you guys, when I was in like fifth grade, I was super fascinated with the Kennedys. So I read like a book, PT 109 by JFK. And there was uh, like a mini series on television. Again, I was in fifth grade. That was a long time ago. And I watched uh, Robert Kennedy and His Times is what it was called about Bobby Kennedy. So that's what I know about the Kennedys. OK, so let's have a chat with Robert Kennedy from the afterlife. And Bobby Kennedy is probably one of the best looking Kennedys. I'm going to say that. And it's okay for me to say that. Yeah, right? Oh, yes, it is. He, um, very, and very smart. Bobby, you feel really young to me though. Uh, although you're very like uh, articulate, I feel like there's a lot of literature around you. I don't know if you wrote a lot. I mean, I know you have a, a law background, obviously, but um, I feel like a literature, like I don't know if you appreciated literature and really enjoyed literature, um, but I see that. And I feel like you could have been more of an English major than a law student. And that if you hadn't perhaps gone into public service as a, um, you know, as a lawyer and, and working for your brother, perhaps you would have been an excellent journalist or in mass communications and such media. Couldn't you guys see that? Yeah, I could see that. Put that in the comments if you could see that. Bobby Kennedy as a journalist. I could totally see that. All right. So... I want to ask you some specific things. I have a beautiful connection with Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife, and I'm curious about your connection to her. And I don't want to gossip. That's not really my interest. That's not my genre. That's not what I do on an Above Life channel. But I'm curious about the relationship that you had with her, because when I've talked with Marilyn, I felt like there is definitely a, a sparks there between the two of you. And so and I know that you knew each other. So I want to talk about that. Can we talk about that? Is it OK to begin with that? And he says, I'd like to talk about the status of the country. Oh, OK, so Bobby, here's the deal. Like, I don't want to be political. And yet it's kind of hard not to be nowadays, right? And he says, um, it's not political to talk about humanitarian issues, to talk about humanity, people being people. It's, inter it's an interesting thing. He says, it's a funny thing how outrage calls people forward into their true to reveal their true selves, outrage brings forward a level of authenticity that other times, the peaceful times, do not present. There's a part of you as an individual that comes through when you are really pushed against the wall, when there is no other choice but to stand up in order to claim your freedom. And that's what America's about. It's it's based upon these principles, not just of democracy, but these 
the basic principle of freedom, which is a value that all humans have in some way. There is a desire for freedom. And in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, there are those who experience very little of what freedom is. And here in the United States, for most of you, there is so much freedom that you do, it is true, you do take it for granted. And I can clearly see that. I can clearly see that. And I'm asking you, do you believe that? Do you believe that you take your freedoms for granted? Do you? This is why history comes back to show us in our ugliest of moments, the sacrifice that we have made to get to the point that we're at sometimes serves as a very painful reminder, a sharp slap in the face with a cold hand to create the opportunity for more momentum, for a new beginning, a starting fresh moment that doesn't always come from those times when there is comfort, but it comes when there is discontent and disordinate amount of an imbalance or an equity of power or the perception of that power. When there is abuse, when there are when there is turbulence beyond unrest, but something that hits at the core of our values as a nation. And when that happens, the heart of our country is at stake. We bleed together. And we are being asked in many ways to step forward into these challenges. And there, are, there is darkness here. And at times you may feel alone and the suffering feels too great and too much to bear to feel. So we look away from what we are being forced to see. And if you held up a mirror to that, what would be reflected back at you? Would it be darkness in your eyes? Or would you be light? Would you be the light that shines the way for others out of this state of suffering and into a harmonious recreation of what true freedom deserves? That is the fabric of your society. That is what has been created for you, not just as a safety net, but as a, a foundation to build upon each generation, adding, adding, and building. Creating a new life through the struggles. We will gain clarity and become closer as a nation. Okay. I asked for a break, you guys, in the stop the thought process because channeling can come through the clairsentient empath empathic channel and I can feel the truth in what he speaks. And I recognize he's right, it's not political. It's patriotic. Mm -hmm. But it's also about a belief in ourselves, in our desire to wanting to live our lives on purpose, with purpose, to be purposeful and Recognizing that we can't do that solo. We're not alone. We're in family groups. We're in businesses. We are in community organizations. We are part of schools. We are part of our communities. We are part of a nation and a global community. And there are expectations and consequences to our extent, the extension of what we believe and value and our choice of our behaviors and our actions. And I can clearly sense, um, sense isn't the right word, I can clearly see the messaging here. Thank you for that. I did not anticipate that 
at all. Those are the best channels <laughs> at all. Okay, so let's talk about Marilyn Monroe. Can we do that? Is that like appropriate now, even after he gave this like really cool speech kind of thing? Can we talk about that? He says, you can ask me what you'd like to ask me, but that doesn't mean I'm going to answer you. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm not a reporter either. I'm not like that, but I am curious because like I said, I'm very connected to Marilyn Monroe and her energy and was she was just brought back up to me recently, just in the last week. And so I wanted to um, connect with you about that because there is some, um, there's quite a bit of, you know, there's conspiracy theories around around everything, around your death, around your brother's death, around the relationship with Marilyn Monroe, around um, your nephew's death, JFK Jr. and that kind of a thing. So there's all that, you know, but I'm interested in the understanding of the relationships and the connection. So Hollywood and government so connected. Oh, sure, sure. He says, oh, sure. Uh, yes. Oh, sure, sure. It's uh, and he's showing me it's a balance of power. So like attracts like is what he's showing me like the power in Hollywood, the power in politics, it would make sense that they would be connected or there would be there would be opportunity because he says there's a tremendous amount of pressure when you're a public figure, not just upon you as a person, but your whole family gets brought into this fishbowl and the people who understand that the most and who have um, more discretion about that would be in the importance in keeping relationships within confidence are others who are in the public eye, you know, public figures. So it would make sense that Hollywood actors and actresses and, and well-known people would commingle with politicians and with members of government who have leadership roles, who have high, high levels of leadership roles and, and clearance as well. So there has to be a, um, an understanding for both, both parties involved. When it comes to Ms. Monroe, I did have a, um, he's saying connection to her. I can see a lot of stuff. Remember you guys, I'm clairvoyant, so that's, that's being able to see. And I can see him with her talking to her and they look like it looks like they're having breakfast together someplace beautiful and it's overlooking like hillside and the ocean and i can see them having breakfast together so i'm super kind of confused a little bit confused about this so okay so bobby and may i call you is that okay if i call you bobby i'll call you robert it sounds better right okay i feel like i know you but i don't really know you <laughs> so um I kind of understand that there is speculation that um, your brother Jack and Marilyn had a relationship, um, intimate, personal relationship, romantic relationship. And then I'm unclear though about you and her. Like I think there maybe have been some talks or rumblings about you two connected um, romantically, physically, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Can you speak on that? Is that okay to speak on? It feels like he's trying to really not, he doesn't want to betray his wife by making things really public. I can feel that. There's kind of this like, mm, there's a little bit of a, a barrier there, you guys. But I, I don't think he's going to be an open book and share stuff, but I'm going to look <laughs> and share with you what I see because I want to know and understand this from Marilyn's perspective as well, right? Because she and I, We've talked about some of this stuff and she made me feel like she genuinely cared for you and that you really helped her kind of get over her relationship with her with your brother is that true and he says i don't know that i can be credited with that but in some respects yes i definitely um he's saying i definitely supported her i was a support for her a comfort to her he's saying a support and a comfort to her and we did, we did spend time together, yes. And he says, it's hard not to be enamored by her. She has such a way, there's such a, an energy about her, such a, a passion and a, and a commitment to, it's almost like a relentless need for success that is, it, it's infectious her being around her and to see her in such a state where she's 
really just a woman with a broken heart because she loves so freely. She, Marilyn, one thing I would share about Marilyn is that she loves so freely and publicly sharing that we're friends, it would be more um, official to say that we were acquaintances. But privately, yes, this woman had a tremendous capacity for love and she felt very misled by my brother and I would assume or presume other men in her life as well and simply just wanting to be to be with someone who understood family and who she could share that depth of her love with and all parts of who she is where she didn't have to tone down any one part of her is something that I think that was nearly impossible for Ms. Monroe to have in her life. As for me, I am very aware of the position that life put me in. And I am, rec I am responsible and accountable for my actions with regard to my relationship with her and the go between, in many cases, between her and my brother. I think initially her initial love was my brother and he broke her heart. And just simply seeing such a strong woman in such a vulnerable state was something I could not just turn my back on and would reassure her of her incredible power over men, power over just about anyone, her charm and her wit. And she was so pleasant to be around. She made you feel like you were the only person in the room and that you were the only thing that could make her. She made you feel as though when you were speaking with her that you were the reason why she was so happy or you were the reason why her energy, why what you were feeling was such a rush was because of you and that she was simply sharing that back to you like a mirror, like a reflective kind of a, an exchange. And so he's making me feel like she had a way of making people feel really special, like they were the most important thing ever. And that when she had a uh, kind of falling out with Jack or when things weren't going well with Jack, that she and she felt really vulnerable and she shared that with him and that he was the, um, like a comfort to her. And it kind of feels like a friendship, but not intended to be that way. It like feels like he was just supposed to be the go-between um, and the buffer, but then between Jack and Marilyn, but then something changed where, and it wasn't just physical, um, you know, animalistic attraction. It wasn't that. There was definitely a, like a friendship, like, and in, in he's sharing that I didn't feel sorry for her. I saw the strength and the sensitivity of her. And I thought, I felt like, what an amazing woman this is. What an incredible woman this is. But there was no place for her, he says, but there was no place for her in politics, in, in conventional public service. There would not have been a at that time, at that time, there was not, there was, that was a boundary to be crossed. It was not something that would have been widely accepted. It would not have been popular to do that. Especially when a man has a family and children and has a duty to country and to family. You simply can't follow the whims of your heart to the fullest extent. You cannot be more committed to anyone else when you already have commitments that are substantial in place. That makes sense. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it, to you guys? That makes sense, Robert. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. Wow.
Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys. So I think this is good for our first conversation with Robert Kennedy, RFK, Bobby Kennedy, in the afterlife. Now, as I said, here at Above Life Channel, we have playlists. Go ahead and check that out to see interviews, afterlife conversations with other of the members of the Kennedy family as well. And if you have other comments or questions, things you'd like me to ask Robert Kennedy in the future, go ahead and put that in the comments below. This is Bridget as always. I hope that we've helped to inspire your spirit and filled you up with hope. Remember, this is your life now, right? This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.